Before we get too far into this thing, I should mention that you have a book coming out again, The Sisters of Stray Garden Place, October 13th. So, uh, man of my word, I won't do your, I won't, I won't summarize your biography and I won't summarize your book because I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll malign it terribly. Uh, please tell us about The Sisters of Stray Garden Place. Cool. Okay. So, The Sisters of Stray Garden Place is a dark middle grade fantasy um, about three sisters who live in a magical house. It's a magical mansion and it's absolutely beautiful and it takes care of them. It makes them food and it tucks them into bed at night and it provides them with clothing and anything they might need. But what's happened is that their parents have left them there, kind of abandoned them to the care of this house. And their parents have said to them, don't leave the house, just wait till we get back. But that was seven years ago. And the other thing you have to know about the house is that it's surrounded by this really tall silver grass. And so the parents have also said, don't leave the house, don't go walking in the grass, we'll come back. And what happens is the elder sister, Winnow, goes out into the grass and she returns and she seems okay. But very quickly after that, she starts to get sick. And so the middle sister, Mayhap, has to figure out why she's getting sick, why she left in the first place. And as she's trying to figure that out, she figures out things about, well, she discovers things about the house and things about her parents and things about herself that change everything that she kind of thought she knew about her life. That's the uh, perfect story to be read uh, during quarantine uh, for COVID-19. Because <laughs> you yeah, can't go outside if you do. It's a quarantine like it's... book. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, I wanted to ask, um, um, well, when you're uh, when you're writing a book like this, where you've got a mystery, especially knowing that you're, I'm assuming, pants it originally and then and then rewrote it until everything was was consistent. When you're dealing with uh, one, I mean, did you know uh, the mystery of where, the, without spoiling, where the parents have, have been off to when you started, or did you find it out along with the characters? No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't know anything. Well, okay, so it's how it started was. Um, I had this image in my mind of these sisters sleeping in a bed. They were all sleeping in, in one bed together. And um, and I wanted to write about them. I thought they were, they were interesting. I wanted to figure out, yeah, who they were and what story they belonged in. It was a really compelling image to me. And I kind of knew that they loved each other deeply, but they also had like really a really complicated dynamic. And so I started writing about them. And in the beginning, they were in a completely different story. Um, uh, cause I just kind of started throwing ideas at them like, oh, maybe they're in this kind of a situation and maybe it's very snowy or maybe it's this and maybe it's that. And I just started writing. Um, and it took me a number of drafts. I don't know how many I, I cause I don't really keep track, but it took me a number of drafts to figure out that they, the, the situation that they were in, in the sense that their parents had abandoned them into this house. And then as I was writing, then the silver grass kind of came up. And then, yeah, it it, it happened um, on one day, and I remember it actually quite vividly. Um, I write really, really early in the morning sometimes when I'm trying to um, trying to draft and trying to figure something out. Um, and I wrote the scene where I figured out why they were in the house and like what was actually going on. And it was it's such it's always such an amazing feeling to figure it out. It's like this. I don't know, like it's it's like the universe is speaking to you or like some some kind of like being from outer space is speaking to you. It always feels really like it just gives me this feeling of elation and and um, like it's like things clicking together. Um, but yeah, so I figured that out. And then it was a matter of going back and planting all the clues and making sure that like the beginning of the book, you know, hinted at the at the final mystery at the end or the reveal at the end. Makes uh, might 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 not make sense to non-writers, but let's let's be honest. Why are non-writers listening to this wonderful writer show <laughs> show for writers? Um, but that I I know a hundred percent what you mean. That moment when the universe opens up, it's almost like seeing God. Like, oh, there you are. I've been yes. dealing with all this atheist reality over here, where there was no nothing magical, and there <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Also, the other thing I have to say is that this book has creatures in it called drum hunts, and they are little black dogs um, because the, the sister, the other thing I didn't say about the sisters is that they're cursed with insomnia. So every time they close their eyes, they get this like really painful white kind of noise in their head. Um, and so these little dogs, 
they're called drum hunts and they sleep inside the they climb into their minds and, and sleep there so that they can close their eyes and have the, the feeling of being asleep if even actually sleep. Um, so and the reason why that happened, well, that just happened spontaneously in a draft. There were these little dogs. Um, I really liked them. I thought they were cool. And I realized, oh, they're sleeping inside their heads. There's this insomnia aspect. And then when I was trying to figure out the plot of the book, one of the things I did was I was like, OK, so there's this magic where they have these creatures who are sleeping in their minds. And I thought to myself, what could go wrong with this? Like, what could go wrong with this magical house and these creatures and the, these sisters? And sometimes that's a really interesting way into a story. If you have a magic system to, is to ask, like, what what could go wrong? What, what if this magic system went bad? Like, what's the what's the dark side of it? Um, so that was another thing that helped me figure out the plot. But it really was like just draft after draft of being in the scenes with these characters and watching things unfold in a way. It's like watching yourself dream and going, oh, OK, yeah, I want to keep that. I want to keep that. I don't want to keep that. Um, and then asking lots of questions about what's going on in the story. So this isn't a, a conscious metaphor for anything. And where you said, oh, well, this is this is my the thematic significance of, of, of this. Um, this is just, it's coming to you and even scarier for me because I find that that's going to reveal a bigger piece if you don't have a conscious plan because that, that, that subconscious is going to come up and bring up whatever's going on in your life, right? I assume. That's true. Yeah, that is very true. I've never thought about it that way. Um, but I also think that there's a kind of safety in writing fiction because, yeah, even though it's very personal and it's very much about your life and what's going on in your mind and in your heart and what you've experienced, it's also about other people. So you can you can always be like, that's not me. That's, you know, that's this character. Um, but yeah, of course, even writing magical books. Um, yeah, there's a there's a like an autobiography to it or an element of uh like it, it's personal it's yeah it's it's not filtered do you uh are you an only child or do you have siblings i have siblings i have three sisters oh how does let that work out yeah <laughs> <Interesting>. <laughs> yeah and i'm kind of the i'm not really a middle sibling because there are four of us but i am the second eldest so in a way, I'm kind of the middle child because my little, my younger sisters are very close in age. So it's kind of like the elder sister and then me and then the two. We used to call them the babies for the longest time. The babies. We can't call them that anymore because they're nearly 30. So. <laughs> <laughs> and so you thought cleverly uh, making four sisters into three would throw everyone off the, the trail. Like, nope, yeah. this <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Uh, and then with uh, with 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 magical uh, a magical system in place like this, do you? I mean, at some point you've got to you've got to clamp down and say these are the rules of my universe. When does that happen? Do you just let everything everything fly where it may? Draft one and then fix it. Draft two, or when do you when do you create your rules? Yeah, um, it's quite late on in the process because I, I like to keep everything quite free when I'm figuring out what I what what the story is about and what kind of. Um, what I really like, like I, I really tend to just add things in that I find fun and beautiful. Um, but yeah, it does get to a point where you have to go, okay, so these creatures are sleeping in their minds. How does that actually work? Um, you know, can they can they just enter their minds at any point, or is it this? And or do, is there like choice involved, or is it at this particular time? And where did they come from? And you know, all of that stuff. Um, and so it's it's kind of an ongoing process. Like I said, I'm quite disorganized. There isn't a I don't go like. I'm going to draft and have all this mess and then I'm going to make everything neat. It's it's more like make a mess and then neaten it up a bit and then make a mess again and then neaten it up a bit. Um, so, yeah, it's it's kind of ongoing where I'm thinking about kind of how to, yeah, how the rules work or how, um, yeah, how things kind of fit into the world and timelines and, you know, all the, like, the nitty gritty of, like, well, she said this at this point, so... She kind of said that at that point. Um, and then even sometimes in copy edits, you know, the, my copy edits or my editor will be like, well, you said this on page five and this on page 15, and then I have to make a choice. But I sometimes I leave the choice to quite late, um, maybe just because I don't like making choices. I don't know. <laughs> yes, do you yell at the copy editor because you can't yell at yourself or not? That's the choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm always uh, grateful and furious when somebody finds uh, finds a crucial thing. Like I'm, I'm always glad. Hey, I'm glad you found it before this thing is out there. Let's make sure it's straight. But also, dang it, I was feeling so good about myself, and now <laughs> I, have to, I have to admit that I've made this mistake. <laughs> yeah, it always kind of stings, doesn't it? You're like, I thought I covered everything. I thought I thought I I figured this out. I'm going to fill issue with dread because, oh, my God, we're this late in the process. And, and you found that. What else is there? Look, yeah. Oh, search. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. 